Hi guys, Maths Guru here and welcome to my video on playing our graphs and Euler's formula, part of the general maths course. Real honor actually having you watch this video. Thank you very much. I mean, if you're being forced to watch it, a whole new discussion. But anyway, if you could do me the honor of subscribing to my YouTube channel, that would be greatly appreciated. Just lets me know you're watching. God, if you don't want me to spam you with the thousands of videos I don't upload because nobody watches maths videos, turn off your notifications. But otherwise, subscribe. It would just mean the world to me. Literally, it means the world to me. I'm sitting in a room on my own talking to myself for far, far too long that is actually normal or good for you. So if you could subscribe, that is great. Now, in my previous videos, <laughs> you've watched those, haven't you? Not really. We have been doing a lot of stuff. We know what an edge is. This here is an edge. We know what a vertex is. That's that point there or all the points there. We know what a loop is. This here is a loop. We know what multiple edges are. These here are multiple edges. We know what a degree of a vertex is. So D has a degree of D of two, because it's got two ways into D, or two ways out if you want to think it that way. We know what an adjacency matrix is. We know how to represent this in terms of an actual matrix with one, zeros, twos, or whatever numbers we have. We know that a connected graph doesn't have any loners in it, like my very good self. We know that we can get to all other points. We know what a bridge is, because we can build one. We've been to Bunnings. Uh, we can take a separate part of a graph or two separate graphs and connect them together. And again, we know what isomorphic graphs are, because we can draw the same graph in different ways, but maintaining the connections. That is important. All right, now let's move on to something even more important. In a previous video, I looked at the idea of we don't like lines that cross. It's confusing. So if we look at the graph here that's been drawn, we've got A, B, C, D, E, F. There appears to be an edge connecting A to D and C to E. Lots of people get confused because they also then think that the, where they cross, there is another place that we visited. And that is not true. We don't actually like drawing graphs like this. We like to have it that there are no lines crossing. And if we can draw a graph where lines don't cross, then we call them planar, all right? So that again is another term, put it in your summary book. That is a graph that can be drawn where no two lines cross. Really, really important, yeah? How would we do it though? How would you draw this diagram such that the lines don't cross? Hmm. Well, I like to think of the edges as elastic bands or rubber bands. And if I was to look at that connection between A and D as an elastic band, and I basically picked it up and dragged it over, would that solve a problem? So if I actually took that and turned it to here and made it connect between there, and that this line no longer connected, or rather no longer crossed C to E, would my graph now be planar? And the actual answer to that is absolutely. I don't have to move C to E. I only have to move one of those lines to stop it actually crossing, all right? Now, again, here, here's the different way. I was showing you a different way of doing it, yes? I moved A to D before, but we could actually move C to E. And you'll notice again that that C to E has just been stretched over so that it's the outside of the graph. And now, ka it is planar. So many questions in general maths exams, both in units one and two and three and four, ask you about planar, do you understand? And in a moment, Euler's rule or Euler's formula, which again is so, so simple if you understand that planar graphs. Now, in an exam, they're gonna give it to you with the crosses. They're gonna give it to you looking like that. If you can then redraw it, and you're gonna to have to redraw it on another bit of paper or on the side of your exam, you're going to be able to then use Euler's formula correctly, but sadly, a lot of people stuff up these questions because they don't redraw the diagram. Don't get tricked into that at all, all right? Now, not all graphs are actually planar. Lots and lots of them are, but I am telling you now, if you were to stop this video and have a go at trying to pull those over each other, it is actually impossible to draw that so that you actually don't have any lines crossing it, okay? <laughs> Trust me, I've tried. I even asked my current group to do that. <laughs> it spent hours, but no, we got to the point. It couldn't actually be done, all right? So again, I, you'll probably notice if you're reading these things about studio arts, Studio Arts is an amazing subject, but obviously uh, it's coloring in, isn't it? Just coloring in, whoa, whoa, hold on a moment, chill, breathe, breathe. 
Now, why do we want to know about planar graphs? Well, it's really, really important because it's not always about vertices and edges. There's something else as well now called faces. Yes, I know, I have a face, I'm so sorry. It is not particularly attractive, I do my best. Normally in the dark, a different discussion. But we need to know about what a face is for Euler's formula that's coming in a moment. So what is a face? A face is basically a section of a planar graph that you can color in between the lines with one on the outside as well. So if we look at this situation here, if I was to color in between the lines, there is one face. That's why they call it F2. Again, coloring in between the lines here, there we go, F2. Coloring in the lines here is F3. Now again, the trick to this is you can also color once outside the lines. So when I color outside the lines as well, that is called my fourth face for that particular diagram. So we would say in that situation, the number of faces is actually equals four. But again, notice with that diagram there, none of those lines cross each other. You have to uncross it first. What else do we notice about this diagram? We've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six vertices. And how many edges do I have? Well, again, I always put a line through them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight edges. Wouldn't it be interesting if there was a rule that connected these together so we could check to see whether something was actually planar? Oh, well, there was. In the previous video, I talked about Euler. Very, very clever guy. No friend like me. Undoubtedly, if he was around in our times now, we'd have a YouTube channel. We'd be competing. He'd win. Oh, but would he? Euler came up with a formula that said, hold on a moment, I can prove that for planar graphs, the following is true. Very fat elephants is two. No, no, hold on, he didn't actually say that. He didn't say very fat elephants is two. What? <laughs> That's my view of it. He said that if I took the very and added it to the fat and take it away from the elephants, I got two. And you're like, that makes even less sense. I know, but V, vertices, F, faces, E, edges, oh, my goodness. And what he found was that for all planar graphs, if he added the number of vertices to the number of faces and took away the number of edges, it was always two with planar graphs. So he said, if you add the number of faces and the number of vertices and took away the number of edges, you would get two if it was planar. Well, let's see here, my faces was four, my vertices were six, my edges was eight. Four plus six is 10, take away, oh my goodness gracious me. And there we go. By having that number of two, I've also shown using Euler's formula that it is planar. Oh my God, this stuff is amazing. Again, one for the summary book. Very plus fat minus elephants equals two. Always in the exam. So let's have an example here. All right, so consider the connected planar graph shown. And again, thank you so much to Cambridge for allowing me to use your examples. You guys rock. Write down the number of vertices, V. So let's say V is equal to vertices. One, two, three, there are four. The number of edges, E equals, now I always put a line through them, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, interestingly, my group, when I was teaching this this year, said, well, no, there's only one connection between C and D. And I was like, no, there isn't. And they go, no, 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 there is only one connection between C and D. There isn't. There is every time it's broken up by a journey or a town, there are actually two edges there. So try not to get tricked. That's really, really important. What else we've got to do? Faces. Now, again, this is where people get tricked with the faces. If you can color in between the lines, that's a face. But firstly, are any of these edges crossing? No. Awesome. So there is one face. There is another face. There is another face. And don't forget the one outside. There is another face there. So I have four faces there. So now let's verify Euler's formula. Euler's formula said V plus F minus E must equal two for it to be planar. So vertices plus the number of my faces, which is four, minus the number of edges, does four plus four minus six equals two, eight minus six is two. And there we go. I have verified Euler's formula. Now again, another example, but they don't have to give you a diagram. The minute they talk about faces or they talk about regions, and again, we try and trick you with the word regions. I know this has got 
absolutely Euler's formula. So a connected planar graph, remember it's got to be connected, has four vertices. So the vertices is equal to four and five edges. Edges is equal to five. Find the number of faces. Okay, it wants me to find a face. Oh, I've only got one formula for that. So I'm going to write very fat elephant is two. So four plus, well, I don't know what faces is. So I'm going to leave that as F minus E is five is equal to two. All right, now this is where your algebra comes in, isn't it? Because what I'm going to say is, well, okay, I've got a plus four here. I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to take away four from both sides. So I'm going to take away four from both sides. That's now gone. I get faces minus five is equal to two minus four is negative two. I want to get my face on its own. So I'm going to get, well, nobody ever wants to get my face on its own. But anyway, uh, I want to get a minus five. I'm going to add five to both sides. So I'm going to add five to both sides. So that's now gone. It gives me faces is equal to three. And there we go. So for four vertices and five edges, I've got to have three faces. And there we go. That's the end of this video. Hopefully you have found it helpful. If you have subscribed, let your friends know, let your teachers know, write a comment and just let me know how I'm doing. What could I do better? Uh, there are other videos in this series and hopefully I will see you in those. If not, you take care guys and please stay safe.